Det kunne lage til. Shabab. And we, we have, have to realize, realize the first thing that applications are made to make our human life more easier, and, and that's, that's how it gives the value for our customers. Um, for me, developing an application is not about putting everything in a nice UI and presenting it to your customer and make it as a, as a working version for your application. I always looking for a high performance applications. Okay. okay, with, with a, a good, good memory, memory management, management on the web, web I, don't I don't want my customers, customers computers, computers to crash. crash. So, so that's, that's important actually when you build all your applications with the previous technologies technology that they have been saying all the whole day. day. So, so you probably won't start, start when you start using AngularJS. It will well, extremely start when, when your application expands. Expand. When you work on your project for one year, and then you will have a tons of code that are written and now you, your customer always complain and saying it's very slow, it takes 10 seconds to load that page and that's, it's a nightmare from, from a business perspective, it's a nightmare for your developer you have to take care of that when you start coding about it and you, you already need to know about different techniques to do that so I'm going to present this for you from a real life example that we are facing every day since October 2014. It's a real uh, hot startup in Palestine. I'm not sure if everyone of you have he heard about it, but it's MeshVisor. Go MeshVisor.com and check it. Um, I want to ask a general question. If, if I said that I have a web project for you, I'm going to pay you $1,000 for that. I need you to do it for me within two weeks. I need someone who show up and say what he will do in this case. Anyone volunteers? Anyone who is doing free, freelancing? Murad, you, you are doing the freelancing. Huh? <laughs> so the first thing I will, I, I think any any one of you will think about. I don't have the time to do it in two weeks, so I will delegate for other people, or I will find a web designer. I have to find another web developer to do it. If 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 my customers are um, telling me that I want it on WordPress or any other platform, so I will find the, the right match for that project okay why because I have to do it in a specific time span and I don't have the ability to do it alone okay um, so uh, that that comes actually from the real-life example let's go back to the technology so whenever you are looking at a website and you want to enhance it and you want to make a better performance for any application that you are working on you have to think about it and separate, drop down everything to a single uh, small pieces so you can deal with every piece alone and make it perfect as much as possible and that's like for instance this is the home page of the MeshVisor application Okay, when I come and look at this website, I see it as a four general components. I can dig deeper in this, but let's say that I, I have to look at this as a four components of my main application. And by the way, it's a very intensive operations coming behind this interface. So I have to deal with GIS information, I have to deal with multiple APIs, I need to deal with 
calculations in the data. I, and also I have to deal with some UI stuff. Okay? So the first thing I do is I look at my web page or my web application as a separated modules. And then I start dealing with every single one alone. Whether you are using the React JS or using the Angular JS, you have to do it this way. If you are looking to build a rich application, an application that will, will have very, uh, like a portal, let's think about the Yahoo website. There is many, many, many components are showing that website. And when you are starting to surf it, you will see it's not slow. Why? Because they are splitting everything into modules. Let's call it modules or components. And then they are ma making sure that every module are working in the best way it could work in. As I said, smart leaders always delegate to accomplish more. So always you have to think about it from this. Now, in our modules, in our modules, we need to find a way to separate this UI from the business logic of the application. Angular, for instance, will give you a good way to, to, to control the routing via the controllers, and then you can move your data operations to the services, okay? That's a simple thing that I could think about in the step number one. So I'm talking about having that to the symbol, to, sorry, to step four, okay? Not to three. The web workers. The web workers is one of the new features that comes with the HTML5 web API. It's a very rich feature that you can use all the time to, cl to clean your application, okay? Make it fast. Use the multi-threading features within your browser. Well, I'm not sure if you know that, but whenever you, op you open a new tab in a, in a website, you are going through a one single thread into your client processor, which means that you, you are always going through a single thread that will run into the memory and you can do concurrent job during that. So if I have to make one plus one, I can't, for instance, print a div into my DOM at the same time, okay? So think about it. We can do multiple things in the same time. Here, here we go to the web workers. In our web workers, we can do whatever code we can, we want to do. Whatever you are going to think about, you can do it inside it, except one thing. You can't access the DOM. I'm not sure if you understand what exactly the DOM, there are some definitions that have been uh, told during the speeches. One of them is a dependency injection or dependency. Um, let me, in a few seconds, so imagine that you have an entity. Maybe your entity will be a class, maybe your entity will be a function or a method, okay? So when I see that this class should be independent from anything else, that means the class should do everything the class is responsible for, and the class should not do anything that is not responsible for, which means in the example that I think Omar said about, was um, about manipulating the DOM, okay? And he has two other entities inside his class. One of them was a server, another one was a DOM, okay? So he said that's a dependency because you have one entity that used two other entities. It's not my business to test or to work on the DOM. The DOM is tested by its own developer and I have to now just use it, okay? So dependency injections, means any entity that depends on another entity should be passed to the, the class, for instance, into the constructor or to the method via the parameters, so I can all the time, all the time, has a workaround to access that method. Um, the other thing is the DOM object. I might ask Russia to explain what is the DOM object in one line. She's uh, more on the front end than me. So, um, if you can tell us what is the DOM object exactly in the browser. Hey, standard. We use this browser to do structuring or the HTML with CSS. It's kind of an API to talk to. Um, um, 
the browser um, using your HTML and CSS files. Um, am I... That's it? Fine. So workers, again, now we will dig into practical things, but I want you to get the concept because it's important for you guys to, to think before acting when you build the, the web applications. So the web, the web workers is a way to make multi-threading mechanism available in your web applications, which means, which means that's a good thing, but also could be a bad thing for you. It could crash your browser or crash your client, so you, you need to know how to use it. So if, I, if we are talking about multi-threading, then we also comes to the fact that how we are do, how we are going to do communications between our main thread and our sub-thread from that, okay? Um, let's look at this. Our first, first steps in, 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 into this world. First, let's imagine that we have a UI thread, which is the web page that we, we land on when we are open a website. The worker actually thread will work into an external JavaScript file that we are going to write our piece of code inside it and we place it out of our application. Okay, so now we have also extra JavaScript code that are not loaded into our memory and we only load it when we, when we need it to, to be in the memory. That's a good point about having more memory management, okay? So the first step that we have after this to do is to initialize an external worker via the worker um, API constructor which is simply calling a new worker and passing the file name relative to the main JavaScript or the main JavaScript application that you have in your UI. The next, the next step, which is important, how, gonna be, how, how the data exchange gonna be happened between the main thread and the, 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 the second one? Because in this case, we have two Threads are going to run, and I need data from the worker, and sometimes you need to populate data in the UI at the same time, but you can't access it from the worker, okay? So here, here we go. We can post using the, the same API. There is two other methods. One of them is post message that I can pass an argument here, and I can handle that in a step, a step number three by building an internal function inside the worker file calling on message equal function and do whatever I want to do as a logic there. I can process everything I want to do. After doing the work, I will notify the UI thread back, sending the data that I want to send it to the UI. So this UI thread will take care of the, of the coming operation. Okay? Here also you can develop your own message function to handle the posted messages from the worker. So that's what we call system messages. Let me show you the demo. Sorry. I have built a small demo here. It's uh, a small robot chatting. I will, I will start writing things and my other thread will start responding to my messages and send me a Google, Google links for everything I, I send it to, to him, okay? I'm sorry for saying him, but that's it. Um, I'll start, so the first thing you see, it's a, mes it's a message passed from my worker saying, hey, this is Peter, give me a topic and I will send you a Google link for that very quickly. So I'm going, for instance, to write mesh visor. Let's leave it mesh visor. So now I sent him a message saying, I want to know more about mesh visor. The other worker has responded to me saying, create, uh, sorry, click here to know more and what else you want to know about. If I click here, 
then it, it takes me to Google searching for that query. Okay? Back again. If I want to ask him about the weather in Ramallah, I'm going to end soon. Don't be bored. And I click back on this. That's cool. That's charging. It will give me the weather in Ramallah. I don't have time to ask him any other questions, so I will say just goodbye. He's going to sleep, okay? <laughs> so quickly, what was going on? First, I have to check for a browser support. The, the, uh, the web workers are supported by most of the browsers. You need also to check which of the browsers are, uh, does not support that from the versions, but it's, it's a common standard in HTML5 now. So first thing, it doesn't hurt, but you need always to, to check if the worker is there or not before starting to initialize, to initialize the other threads. Um, so how I initialize that, as I said, I'm using the, the worker construct referencing the, the JavaScript file, and then I posted the first, the first message to my worker. And by the way, the post message will take an arguments. It's like a framework, it's up to you how do you send your parameters, how you structure your data via the messages in order to make them both. You need to define your own protocol, for instance, so to make sure that your application, uh, your UI thread understands the worker thread, okay? So in my case, I have, I have came to this uh, structure. In every post message, I will send a call operation, which I will reference, for instance, chat uh, start. If I need an extra argument, I can send it as a second parameter, and that's it, okay? Um, so that was the first, let's, let's have a quick look. So from the, the, the UI thread, I have initialized the worker, I have sent post a message with a JavaScript JSON object, saying the call is chat start, the argument's name is Peter. Now let's have a look at the, at the other side of the worker. Inside the scripts robot.js, I have this on message function that accepts the event. And by the way, the event is the default on message parameter that comes. You need, sorry, you need to reference to the data uh, property inside that object in order to get access to the sent data, okay? So I have checked what is the call. It's calling for the chat to start. At that case, I have an, uh, another hidden uh, method here that you, you can see in this slide, but it will look this. And it will call respond to user question by saying, hey, blah, 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 as the answer that we have seen before. And then I logged back that, that was for debugging, okay? Once, once again, let's, let's look again. Here, and, and respond to user question, I am inside the robot.js, but I have also been able to post a message to the main UI thread by the same way, spend, sending another call parameter called chat message. And I sent the, data, the message as a, a string inside the data property. Um, so back to the UI thread, back to the UI thread. I have also an on message handler that accepts an event. It check if I'm doing a chat log which comes from the log method from my work, well, from the worker actually. And here it check also for the chat message and inject, inject the message back into the UI. Okay? I'm gonna finish soon. Um, here is, here is the final thing that you have to do. Whenever you open a thread, whenever you open a thread and you are done with the operations that you want to do, close it down. Don't let it in the memory. You will crash your client machine. Understood. That's important. So, um, I have created also here a handler for chat close. Whenever the chat is fine, when I write goodbye, it should call 
uh, call um, the chat close, and here you have to call also this API, API function called close, and it will shut down that thread from your client memory. Okay, and now every that memory things are gone. You can access the demo online um, <coughs> via this link, and you also can have a, the full look at the, the demo that I have presented from this repository. You, there is much more code presented there for manipulating the DOM, uh, making the, the demo more colorful, and let's say more to looks like a CLI. That's it, thank you. What do you mean by access to one memory? No, actually, you have to think about the worker is a one thread. No, if you want to pass data between them, so you have to handle that via the system messaging thing. That's it. Yes. You have a question? No, because the, every tab goes through a main thread, but these sub-threads will be under your main tab thread as well. Yeah. Well, actually, you think it depends on your code. There is no timeout. The thread will, will exist into the memory until you you call the close method. Okay? It depends on how you consume. If, if the browser crashed, the, the thread will go on. So you have to control it from the beginning to the end. That's a full life cycle that you have to you, you have to think about it. But again, a one single one single advice, thank you first for giving us one minute. Um, don't think about the worker as a module. Think about the worker as an external code that, for instance, will grab some AJAX, using the AJAX will get, them the, get some data from your database, do some calculations, cache it, read it from the database, send it back to the UI. Don't ever block the UI. Okay? That's how you should think about it. Ahmed. Yeah. Yeah. So, the worker is going to do a single thread. Should we see the browser and it's being pulled back down? So, we have a thread to the camera. No, the worker is going to do a thread. The whole life cycle is going to do it. So, the thread is خمسة workers يشغلوا لك إياها أسرع لأنك أنت هلا لما تسويهم أجهك بيكونوا كل worker بأجهك request بيفتح main thread. Okay. فأسرع يكون عندي خمسة workers. Actually it depends كمان كيف أنت يعني تعمل إذا ك إذا worker الواحد بيعمل one أجهك request وناديته خمس مرات. It's the same. فهمت علي؟ بس إذا أنت أصدق تعمل خمسة أجهك request من جوات thread واحد أنت لساتك في جوات thread تبع الworker. Okay. Thank you. You have question? Um. You can do it, but you have to contact the. There is, there is. Uh, sorry, I, uh, I'm. That was written in uh, the presentation. The scope of the worker will remain into the area where you define it. For instance, we have var um, robot worker equal new worker. Okay. So the scope of that parameter is the place where you can interact with that worker. What if I, like, what if I move it? If you have, if you are defining it global, it's and you can play with it. It's a, as I say, this is like a general API, and you are responsible for it. But so you, there's no way to like, for example, broadcast messages. Well, you can develop it. I mean, like not manually. Yeah, exactly. No, no, no way. Thank you.
وظيفته قبل ما احكي لكم عن السنتكس تبعته بيجي على السكريبت تبعك هون بشوف وين في تاج معين اللي هو اظن هون انه هدول التست عشان يفحصوها عنك وفي اشياء مرات صغيره بتكسر انه صعب اللي هيومن تو ديتكت فهدول التست ممكن يساعدوا ات ويل نوت يعني مشكله بس كثير بيساعدوا فاذا عندك هدول ماشي انت 